This short tutorial will discuss the differences between information literacy models and inquiry learning models. Please note that this transcript is not to be used and referenced in your academic research. Please go to the primary source material which is listed in the reference list. You may have realised that teacher librarians are leaders in information literacy and inquiry learning. But you may have also wondered whether these two terms refer to concepts which are the same thing because they are often used synonymously. The concepts of information literacy and inquiry learning are complementary, yet often somewhat confused. Part of the confusion lies in the similarity between information literacy models and inquiry learning models. This tutorial will introduce you to the concepts of information literacy models and inquiry learning models and give you a brief overview of just some of the many different models that exist and how they can be used. Information literacy models and inquiry learning models developed from two different foundations. Information literacy models, which describe the information seeking process, seek to describe data collection and information gathering processes. They developed from library and information management literature. Inquiry learning is a pedagogical framework which incorporates elements of information literacy but focuses on explaining a constructivist approach to teaching and learning where the goal is for students to make meaning, that is, they construct their own meaning by building on prior knowledge and experiences through authentic and meaningful tasks one of which is often seeking information using information literacy skills. To further clarify this difference, let's start by looking more closely at information literacy models and then go on to explore inquiry learning models so that the difference is more easily seen. A foundational information literacy model is the Information Search Process, or ISP, developed by Carol Kultow in the 1980s and early 1990s. Based on her research into the information and research habits of students in schools and colleges, this model not only describes the processes involved in seeking information, it also was the first to explain the holistic nature of information seeking, that is, the individual's thoughts, feelings and actions across each stage of the process. Since then, many information literacy or IL models have emerged. Some of the most commonly used in Australia are the information search process that we've already spoken about, the ISP developed by Kultau and Kultau Maniotis and Kaspari, the Big Six developed by Eisenberg and Berkowitz, and the information process divided by the New South Wales Department of Education and Training. Regardless of the name of the model or the terminology that is used, they all involve stages of seeking or gathering, selecting, evaluating, analyzing, organizing, and presenting data and information. When compared, it's easy to see how these information literacy models share similar steps. There are a range of information skills process models. Let's take a look at one as an example. This model is the New South Wales ISP model, which was based upon Kultau's ISP model. The information process here is a series of steps taken by anyone completing an information task. Whether it be researching a new washing machine or investigating a feral animal as part of a year seven science project, Kultau's research revealed that we all go through a similar process. Each step, as with all IL models, requires the use of information skills. This model is not linear, that is, students can go back to a stage if they require it. The six stages include defining their purpose, which is what they want to find out and why, locating, which involves sorting through what they already know and what they still need to find out and locating sources of information. The selecting stage is more specific where the student narrows what they need to select from the resources located, whereas organising is looking at how they will use the information 
if they have enough information and if they need to go back to one of the earlier stages to locate and select other information. The student researcher then looks at presentation. How will this information be presented and for whom will it be presented? Finally, the researcher assesses their entire process, looking at what they've learned, strategies they may use in the future and strategies that did not work. They might even look at further research, which is where they may, may go from this point. Inquiry learning models incorporate information literacy, as inquiry learning is founded on the concept of learning through information gathering. However, inquiry learning models are more than information seeking processes. They are pedagogical models and are comprised of three elements, questioning frameworks, information literacy or information seeking processes, and an action research cycle. Questioning frameworks drive the inquiry forward and the amount of student-led questioning versus teacher-led questioning relates to the type of inquiry pedagogy being implemented. The more structured the inquiry, the more likely it is that the teacher will lead and frame the question initiating the inquiry and those moving the inquiry forward. In a guided inquiry, the essential question may be posed by the teacher, but the guiding question may be formed with potential assistance by the students. In an open inquiry, the student initiates and forms all questions that underlie the inquiry being investigated. The action research cycle is not explicitly acknowledged in inquiry learning literature. However, Lupton suggests that acknowledging the continuous nature of action research and embedding this into the inquiry learning model helps not only to prepare students for future research in professional and community contexts, but also helps to avoid the inquiry being seen as a discrete unit where there is a defined end, usually the submission of a final product. The inclusion of a final stage in the inquiry process that involves taking action and reflecting on learning is a significant aspect of inquiry learning and viewing the model through the lens of action research creates a learning experience that is not artificially ended once the unit or semester is complete. One of the most commonly used and well-developed inquiry learning models is guided inquiry design or GID in uppercase letters. This is based on the work of Kultau and was created by Kultau, Maniotis and Kaspari. This is a form of guided inquiry as the teacher or teacher librarian works closely with the student to guide them through the inquiry process. Please note that this is just one example of guided inquiry that just happens to be called guided inquiry design. It's very important when referring to this specific inquiry learning model to capitalize the name to make it separate from the general term guided inquiry. With over 30 years of research behind it, guided inquiry design is becoming increasingly popular as an inquiry learning model. Guided inquiry design is a framework developed and based on the work with the ISP and its intention is to support teachers and school librarians to guide student learning through research within an inquiry context. GID is learning centric, not product driven. That is, it focuses on the learning that happens at each stage of the inquiry, rather than placing all emphasis on assessing a final product. It also draws in Kultau's ISP and supports the emotional aspects of learning driven by students' high level of questioning. Through GID, students learn more about the process of how they learn through inquiry and reflection on their own learning. It is the goal that this learning is then transferable. Learning is situated in an authentic context and within this model, skills are practiced and learnt in that authentic context. Information literacy models and inquiry learning models are often referred to interchangeably. However, from this explanation, you should be able to see the differences. 
As a teacher librarian, your role as an information leader and a curriculum and pedagogical advisor mean that you will be called upon to support teachers in the development of inquiry learning opportunities and to assist students to develop their information literacy skills. Understanding the small but significant differences will enable you to apply your expertise and skills in the way that is most effective in your teaching and learning context.